Welcome to Box Free with Stephanie. Today I want to show you how to make some basic foods with simple ingredients from scratch. And I hope that you can discover cooking box free is fast and delicious. So let's cook together. Today we are going to make homemade sloppy joes and homemade hamburger buns. So let's get started with our dough first. My dough has been in the bread machine, so it's all ready. And this is a bun dough, not just a regular bread dough. And I like to use that when I make hamburger buns. It just seems to be uh, very soft and a little bit nicer than just plain bread dough, I guess. So let me get my dough out of here. So the first thing you want to do is take it out of your machine. If you don't have a machine, you can make it um, by hand. Just a regular kneaded dough is what you're making, a yeast dough. You want to knead it just a few times to get the air pockets out. And then we're going to go right into shaping our buns. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is cut it into my pieces for my buns. I have made buns that, this is a um, three and a quarter cup yeast dough. That's how much flour I've got in here. So it makes about a pound and a half of a, if you were gonna make a loaf. So I've made everything from eight buns, 12 and 16. And I've decided that I prefer the size of the 16. So I'm gonna make 16 buns today. So I'm just gonna cut it into 16 pieces. And you just want them to be as equal as you can get them. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So if you like a big, thick bun, eight of them will be perfect. And even 12 makes a really nice size. But I don't like to eat necessarily that much bread with my hamburgers and I use these for all kinds of things. So I've got four, four, yeah, four, four, and four. Wait, did I do that wrong? Four, four, you know I did, okay. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of flour down. What you basically do is grab your ball of dough and you're gonna, you can kind of put your fingers around it and then you just grab it and make a little ball like that and all that's on the bottom. And then you just pat it down sticks to your hand, you flip it over and give it a little pat. And you really want these to be about the size of your palm. It really depends on you. You can make them whatever size you want because you're shaping the dough. Okay, but first I need to grease my pan really quick. So you need a greased pan because you don't want your buns to stick. And they're gonna sit on this pan for another 45 minutes to an hour and raise a second time. They've already raised one time in the bread pan, but we're gonna give them a chance to raise again. And they won't get gigantic this second time, but definitely want them to raise up a little bit. So this is a smallish one, but I'm okay with that because I'm gonna fit 16 of them on here. So again, you take it, kind of just wrap it around and you can keep wrapping it around if you want but you really don't need to. Once you get that nice ball, you're pretty much ready to squish it. And that's what kind of gives you that nice um, top, I think. Otherwise, you end up with this kind of wrinkly top. So this is a very slow process, but it's actually quite calming. So you know, this looks all wrinkly and stuff. You can just grab a part that looks nice and you smooth it over and squeeze it and then it becomes nice and smooth and that becomes your nice top. You just add more flour as you need it. These are my buns. So this is a little bit smaller because that was probably the end of my 16 pieces. This one's a little bit not so perfectly round, but that's okay. This is 16 on my tray. So all I'm gonna do now is cover these with a dry thin towel and 
we'll just let them sit for probably 30 to 45 minutes. You kind of want them to double in size. So you kind of get an idea of how big they are and then you go from there. So while those are rising, we're going to start our sloppy joes. So first thing you're gonna do is chop up some onion and green pepper. Now, a lot of times when I'm chopping onions and green peppers for something like a hot dish, I don't really care how tiny the pieces are, but because this is for my sloppy joes and you actually, you'll actually notice if you have bigger pieces, I like to chop it for just an extra 30 seconds or so to try to get all the pieces as little as possible. And my recipe calls for a quarter cup of onions, but this was the size onion I had, and um, I just like to um, use up all my onion when I cut one up, I guess. It's just a thing I have. So let's see how much we have. Should have close to a quarter cup, I mean a half a cup. Okay, so I'm going to put this in our bowl, oopsie, oopsie, okay, now we're going to do our green pepper, and if you either don't have a green pepper in your house, or your family doesn't like onions and green peppers, um, you can make this without the green pepper and without the onion. Or you could use onion powder if you don't have any of this stuff. You could use onion powder, garlic, well, we'll put garlic powder in it once we get our other things. But I'm just saying you don't have to have these fresh ingredients if you, if you don't have them in your house, just don't put them in your sloppy joes. I just like to have a little extra and I certainly don't mind using half a cup. This is not going to be half a cup. So normally I like to do equal amounts of green pepper and onion, but it looks like my green pepper isn't going to quite be a half a cup. And that's okay because when you're cooking from scratch, you just improvise and it usually doesn't matter. It'll taste just as good. So let's just see how short we are. I wanted half a cup. All right, that's not so bad. Okay, so we're gonna add that to our onion. And now we're gonna to go to the stove to actually cook our burger and make our sloppy joes come together while we wait for our buns to rise. Okay, so now we're on the stove ready to make our sloppy joe actual mix. This is one pound of ground burger. We're gonna just cook that up. And while we're cooking that, we're gonna add our green peppers and onions that we just chopped up. So this will take a few minutes to cook. We'll just give it some time and come right back to it. I'm gonna turn down my stove top a little bit. I cooked this over medium high heat. Now I'm gonna turn it down to a medium to low heat. And I'm going to start with my garlic powder. I do half a teaspoon and I don't always measure. I just measure in here. So I'd say that's half a teaspoon. And again, with this kind of stuff, it's very much to your taste. So you need one teaspoon of mustard, which is about that. 
Now my ketchup I will measure. I need three quarters of a cup of ketchup. And I do like to measure this because this is where we get most of our liquid. So that looks like three quarters of a cup. Then we need just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, which is probably about that. Then we need some brown sugar. I'll do one tablespoon of packed brown sugar and Worcestershire sauce. I need one tablespoon of that. And it's that easy. Okay, now you just stir this all up and you taste it and you decide what you want more of. Maybe you want more brown sugar. Maybe you need more, more um, ketchup or more Worcestershire. Maybe a little more mustard if you want the tang. Depending on how juicy it is, I will add more ketchup and then I'll taste it. And if I don't like the taste, I add a little more Worcestershire. I like that flavor in Sloppy Joe's. And I like them to be just a little bit sweet, so I add the brown sugar. Now, this is just solid meat with the onions and, and green peppers. Um, seems to me like a lot of Sloppy Joe recipes call for oatmeal, like quick cooking oatmeal. And they say that's to kind of thicken it up and give it some substance so it sticks to the buns, but I personally don't like that. I just want meat. But you can do whatever you need to. If you want to add oatmeal, I think you could use the same recipe with just some oatmeal added to it. Um, so you let this simmer, and in a few minutes it will get a little juicier, and then I'm going to taste it. I'm not going to taste it right away because you, you want to simmer this simmer for about 10 minutes to get all the flavors to blend together. But whatever, if you were in a rush and you needed to serve it right now, you could. So sloppy joes are really easy. And I started making it because mostly I never had a can of sloppy joe mix in my cupboard. So I just came up with a recipe. Found one in a magazine and then I altered it a little bit to what I liked. Adding the Worcestershire and um, taking out the oatmeal and I like it. So you can let this simmer and it'll be ready now or it'll be ready in 10 minutes. The longer you let it simmer, the more the flavors blend together, um, but it's basically ready to serve. I'm gonna taste it one more time. Yep, I think it's good. It's got a little tang, a little sweetness. I don't add pepper to mine, I'm not a big pepper fan. I mean, black pepper, I just don't do it, but there's your sloppy joe mix. And I think it holds together pretty well. When you put that on a bun, we'll see when our buns are done that it's going to be delicious and box free. Okay, there's our sloppy joes. We'll let that just simmer for 10 minutes and then we'll serve it. Okay, we're back going to bake our hamburger buns. They have been sitting under my dish towel for probably almost 45 minutes. And you can see that they have definitely increased in size. They're almost touching in a couple of spots and that's perfectly fine. So we're going to pop these in the oven. I have preheated the oven to 375. We're going to bake them for 12 to 15 minutes. Now, I keep my hamburger buns very plain. Uh, I used to sprinkle flour on it, but then that just kind of gets all over your mouth. It's kind of a pain. Um, if you want that shiny, kind of crispy top, you could do an egg wash, just beat an egg and use a pastry brush, brush and put it on the top. And you could also add sesame seeds on top of your egg wash. Um, but I just keep it simple and I put them in just like this and they turn out to be a nice golden brown. So we're going to put them in the oven. And we'll set the timer for 12 minutes and then come check on them. Okay, we're back. My buns have been in the oven. That's funny, my bun in the oven. My buns have been in the oven about 13, 14 minutes and they're just starting to get golden. I'm gonna take a peek. I'm gonna call those done. 
Now, I think they look gorgeous. Um, they kind of touch together, and so when you actually break them apart, you kind of get that feel like they're, whoopsie, got to turn my timer off. I'm keeping my oven on because I'm going to bake something else. Um, but that's what you want, nice golden buns. And then we're going to take them off. Let them start to cool for a little bit. I don't separate them right away unless they happen to come separated. Oh, like that. No. Nope. When you are making the larger buns, if you do um, say like eight or 12 of these, the one thing you wanna make sure is that you cook them long enough to actually get the bun and the dough cooked inside of your larger size buns, um, which means that you may end up with just a slightly darker bun. All right, come on. Okay, darker bun than what these are. Um, but that's the one thing I would caution you against. Like these big ones are not probably going to be quite as done compared to these smaller ones, but they're still going to be baked through enough. Uh, where are they going to fit? So, look at these gorgeous buns. I just think they're awesome. And they just, mmm, they smell so good and they're so soft and they are just delicious. So, I can't slice into them yet because when you take hot things out of the oven and you cut into it, the texture is just way too soft and they never really work as well. So, you want to let these sit for about five minutes or 10, if you can wait that long. Um, and then we're gonna slice them and serve our sloppy joes. Our buns have been cooling for about three or four minutes. I'm now going to slice it open and serve my sloppy joe. You just take a nice serrated blade and cut it. A really nice sign action is what you want when you're cutting bread. And look at that. Nice airy dough that is gonna be delicious. So we'll take some of our homemade sloppy joes Put it on our bun and see, I think it just works beautifully without the oatmeal in there. It's just solid, nice uh, meat. Top it with your homemade bun and there is a delicious Sloppy Joe, all box free. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed Box Free with Stephanie today and I really do hope you make homemade buns because they are just delicious and Make them whatever size you want and make Sloppy Joes to go with it and have a great meal. We'll see you later.